Hi there, and welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 3. And in this lesson, we're looking at how you can use logarithms to convert the graph of the exponential function, y equals ax to the n, into a straight line, and then use that straight line in order to calculate the values of a and n. One important use of logarithms is in what I was just saying, it's in converting the graph of an exponential function into a straight line. And having done that, we're then able to use our understanding of the gradient and y-intercept of a straight line to interpret the exponential function. Now, there are two types of exponential function that we will need to look at. In this lesson, we're just looking at one of them. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to look at functions of the form y equals ax to the n, where a and n are constants, and y and x are the variables. Now, the theory is as follows. You start off just with the equation that they give you, y equals ax to the n, and then you take the log of both sides. doesn't matter what base you use. You could use ln, log to the base e. Uh, in this question, I choose to use log to the base 10, which is just the log button on most calculators. So we take the log of both sides, that gives us log y on the left is equal to the log of ax to the n on the right hand side. We then use the multiplication rule with logarithms, that if you've got the logarithm of a times by b, that's the same as log a plus log b. So this term on the right hand side gets split up into two terms, log x to the n plus log a. We then use the rule for powers. Here we've got x to the power of n. And if you remember the, the logarithm rule with powers, that can be changed to log y equals n times by log x plus log a. Now, once we've done that, although it's not immediately obvious that this is the case, we do have the standard form of a straight line. Now, putting the things in brackets makes it slightly easier to see this. What we have on the left-hand side is a variable. Instead of y, it's log y, but log y is still a variable. Uh, m, which normally stands for the gradient, has become the constant n. And x, the variable, is still a variable. It's the log of x, which is still a variable. And c, the constant, has become log a. So what that means is the two axes can now become the log x axis and the log y axis. And log x and log y become the two variables that we have to plot. We calculate values of log x and log y from information given in the question. In the question, they'll give you a table of values. And in that table of values, you'll have values for x and values of y you'll have to calculate values of log x and log y uh, and increase the size of the table. Once you've done that, you then plot the values of log x and log y and draw a straight line. Once you've drawn the straight line, you can then use the straight line and from it estimate the y-intercept, which will give us the value for c, which is log a, and calculate the gradient from the line, and that'll give us m. Uh, we calculate n and a in the original function using n equals m, as you can see up here, and log a equals c, as you can see up here. Now, that's the theory. Things will become a lot clearer when we do an example. So example one. A company believes that the number of employees, P, who worked for the company, T years after it was founded, can be modeled by the exponential equation, P equals A T to the power of B. And P and T are the two variables here. P would normally be Y, T would normally be X, and A and B are the constants. The table below shows the number of employees at different points in the company's history. Plot a linear graph to represent this data and calculate from your graph the values of A and B. Now, I'll let you have a go at doing this yourselves first. So the first thing you'll need to do is increase the size of this table, add another two rows, 
You'll need to work out the log of T using your calculator, the log of P using your calculator, plot those values on the graph, and then use this reminder up here to try and help you work out what A is and what N is in the original equation. Okay, pause the video. Have a go at doing this yourself first, and then come back to me again when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look at this. So that was the question. Now, the first thing we'll do is deal with the equation itself. So the equation is P equals AT to the power of B. We take logs of both sides. So that gives us log P equals the log of AT to the power of B. Using the multiplication rule, we can split that up into two parts, log of t to the b plus the log of a. And then using the rule for powers, we can split or we can rearrange that into log p equals b log t plus log a. Putting it into brackets just makes it slightly easier to see what's going on. And that is the form y equals mx plus c. So we need to calculate the values of log p and log a. That's the table. We need to add two more rows, one for log t, one for log p. Calculating the values of log t, just using the calculator, gives us that. Calculating the values of log p, using the calculator, gives us that. Now, there's nothing new there, so that's what we've done so far. That's the um, uh, rearranged equation in the form of a straight line, and that's the table we just worked out. Now you'll need to draw axes. You'll need to choose a sensible scale for those axes. For the t-axis, or the log t-axis, which would uh, normally be the x-axis, that's going to have to go up as far as 1.4. And the y-axis, which will now be the log p-axis, that's going to have to go up at least as high as 1.46. So something like that. And those are the points plotted on the axes. And you can see they don't make a perfect straight line, but it is quite close to a straight line. And what you have to do at this point is draw a line of best fit uh, for those points, which would be something like that. And uh, actually only one of the points is any distance from the line at all. So it is very close to a straight line. From the graph, we estimate the y-intercept, which will give us c, and we calculate the gradient as accurately as we can. Now, the y-intercept is the easier thing to do. Um, it's that point there where the line crosses the y-axis, or the log p-axis in this case, and that's pretty close to 0.2. That means that c is equal to 0.2. Now, C is log A, so that means that log A is equal to 0.2. We'll then have to do 10 to the power of both sides, because 10 to the power of is the inverse function of log, and it'll cancel with log. So 10 to the power of log A is just A. The 10 to the power of and the log, they cancel each other out. And on the right-hand side, we'll have 10 to the power of 0.2. 10 to the power of 0.2 is 1.59 to three significant figures. Well, that's A. So that's A in the original equation. We've now worked out that it's very close to 1.59. We also need to work out the gradient of the line. To work out the gradient of the line, you can choose any two points that you like on the line. Doesn't matter which two you choose. Now, because it doesn't matter which two you choose, Choose two which will make life easy for you. So I've chosen these two points. The one on the y-axis, which is at 0, 0 0.2. And I've chosen this point here, which is at 1, 1 1.1. And the reason why I've chosen them is because they're nice numbers. They just make things easier to do. The gradient is the change in y divided by the change in x, which is 1.1 take away 0.2 divided by 1, take away 0, which is just 0 0.9 divided by 1, which is the reason I chose those points. 0 0.9 divided by 1 is 0 0.9, which means that m equals 0 0.9, but m is b. So therefore, b 
equals 0 0.9 in the original equation. Okay, what have we done? We started off with an exponential equation, p equals a t to the b. We then transformed that into a straight line by taking logarithms of both sides and rearranging things, which give us a straight line of the form y equals mx plus c. We calculated the y-intercept c, which was log a. We calculated the gradient, which was b. And from that, we could work out what both a and b are. So we calculated that a is 1.59, and we calculated that b is 0 0.9. Once we've done that, we can substitute those values back into the original equation, and the equation becomes p equals 1.59 times by t to the power of 0 0.9. Questions may well then ask you to use that equation to work out further things, but that's as far as we'll go in this question. Okay, that is the end of the lesson. If you have the textbook, then turn to page 109, and from exercise 5D, just try these five questions. These five questions are looking at exponential functions of exactly the same form as the one we just looked at, uh, the other questions are looking at the second form, and we'll look at the second form in the next lesson. But thank you very much for listening, and cheerio.